Hi friends, it's Sarah from rufflesandrainboots.com. So today I'm going to show you how to plan, cut, and assemble one of these really cool layered signs. You can make a shelf sitter, you can make a hanging sign, and the file is done for you. So what would make it better than that? All right, so if you are new here, hi there, you can go to your YouTube playback speed settings. I don't like a lot of filler in my videos, I want you to be able to start crafting. So anything above normal will actually slow this video down. So again, YouTube settings, playback speed, and you can choose anything to slow it down. So you can get the link to this down below. I have created a premium cut file for all of the X tools. So you will get the SVG PDF and all those other files, but I've also created an XCS done for you file. It includes the original, it includes a uh, shelf sitter with the multiple spacers and it includes the signage as well. So this is like a 10 inch sign, but you can go as big or as small as you'd like. This is also not just for X tool lasers. So if you have an atom stack, if you have an Aeon, if you have any others, you can work with those as well. Also included in the file are the materials I use to produce mine. I also included two options for you to use these. You have four cuts, seven cuts, depending on what you want. And I've given you some options for hangers. So I've already included the one with the holes, but if you'd like to make a keyhole layer, we have that for you as well. I've also tested it down to five inches. Um, up is no problem, but down gets a little squirrely. All right, so to get started, we're going to take everything except one layer, turn it to no output or ignore. And then you can look in your layers panel, bottom left in XCS 2.0, and you can just hide those if you want. I'm gonna show you, we're gonna unhide those when we put in our settings in just a second. So I'm going to uh, refresh my screen. Apparently, look at this, my computer is not even connected at all. So let's go connect one of our machines. So I'm gonna give you settings for both the P2 and the S1. I haven't tried this on the 10 watt M1 yet. Um, but it is three millimeter MDF, so it should work with a few passes. I happen to be plugged in for this one because I ran a long program before. But once it refreshes, you can see I have Coral MDF. This is Pattern Ply from Smoky Hill Designs. All of these colors come from Smoky Hill. So first, before you do your um, close shot camera, you're going to want to hit your distance. You can auto or exact measure your distance. I am working on a honeycomb here because I was too lazy to take it out. So mine is going to be a little bit higher than yours. I'm gonna go over here to the settings and go into my metric from the Imperial. So you just select millimeters and I measured uh, with my honeycomb edition 4.7, so we are good. Now I can put this into place and I can click off the item, select close shot view. And this is the second camera on the Xtool P2 that allows you to zoom in right above where you want. So you can see you can hit command plus to zoom in or use the zoom button on the very bottom right of XCS 2.0. And just a tid tidbit, I see that I did not put this in level or in um, straight. So I'm gonna go ahead and close shot view down here at the bottom as well. I think I'm a little too close to this edge. I mean, I like cutting it close, but I like getting the right size of everything as well. All right, so I'm gonna do this close shot and sure enough, I just need to move it over a little. And now I right click to remove that close view. And now we can start with our settings. So if you're unfamiliar, there is a really, really cool way you can input the easy set panel. So here we have speed, we can move it up here and power. We also have passes. We also in the new version will have kerf and a couple other things. However, you also have the drop down menu here and the really cool material easy set library. So you can see three millimeter MDF is in here. But I want you to know, you can easily click on that button. It You can search anything. Now, when you're in here, you see two different kinds of stuff. So I will tell you, do not care about the machines that are highlighted down here. Click on what you want, and then you can choose from the drop downs what you have. So this says 127, but I've already tested quite a few colors of uh, Smoky Hills Pattern Ply MDF, and I know I'm gonna probably run it at 45 or 55 power a slower speed. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the easy set panel and type that in right here. So we're gonna do 55 and 10. It is pretty slow. 
you can try yours faster. I just want to tell you on the P2, it's 55 and 10. Um, and you can actually save your settings. If you didn't know, you hit the little save button at the top, name this, whatever you want. I don't know why I named that fast. This is not fast. And then every time you can drop that down in the future for the S1 on a 40 watt, I'll give you my settings there. It's, you know, again, it could vary by color for you and it could vary by always by supplier, but I really am enjoying getting these from Smoky Hill because I can just put in my preset and be ready. Now, speaking of the preset, I'm gonna go back over to the layers panel, make view everything. I'm going to just choose my preset here and now all of my settings are loaded. Because we already have those set to ignore, we can just hide them again. And we just validate everything is in here correctly on slats, we've got our material, we've got our depth and we've got our settings. We can go ahead and hit process. In XES 2.0, you can see you get the laser module trajectory just to validate. You also get estimated time. When you hit start to send the file, you'll get this message on anything with a slower speed like our 10 that we input. Just don't walk away from your laser. Always good advice. Hit OK. And now you're going to press start on your actual machine. You can see this is going to be real time. I am using an inline fan. It's a six inch X-Tool inline fan. I really like it. Uh, it does a great job pulling that nasty MDF stuff out. All right, so you can see straight out of a laser, I always try and give you exactly what you're gonna get. When you get a little message, uh, you can hit okay. You can load in your next material. You can put the one you just did to no output right up here. And then you're going to, you can hide it and lock it or whatever, but you got to make sure you don't have it on output. You choose your next layer and then you make sure that one goes to output on. So you can see I refreshed my bed. All my settings are already in here. I'm going to remeasure because even though it's, it comes out exactly the same, which is great because it is exactly the same. I just like to do that again. Close shot again, I do this with everything just to make sure I'm lining this material up as well as I can. And then now we have our settings. We gotta turn it on to output yes, which is that little toggle. We hit process. Again, you're gonna get the laser module trajectory, estimated time, and the nice little error message because hey, you're going pretty slow. I'm not gonna go through each one of these, but I do want to just tell you this process is repeated for every single layer you have, except for anything you're doing with two colors. So for me on the white, I will actually do both of those on a single board because I'm using one spacer for my sign. So you just repeat this again. You turn off the output, you turn on the next one, you refresh, you distance measure, you check your air, your sides, and then all your settings are already in. See, this is, I love this machine. It does actually make things so easy um, comparatively to some of my others. All right, you can see everything comes up. Look how dirty my honeycomb is. Do you have a dirty honeycomb? Don't tell me if yours is clean. You could just keep it to yourself. All right, so here's the white you can see butted up right next to each other. You don't have to worry about char, which I'll talk about in a minute. So be sure to save your file. And now we're gonna assemble a little alcohol with a cloth or paper towel is going to get these char mocks off in seconds if you use the pattern ply from Smoky Hill. You need whatever sort of glue you wanna use. There's tons of options. You need some clamps and something to protect the top layer when you clamp everything together. And you may need a paintbrush to move around your glue. So I'm gonna go ahead and just wipe all these down. Look, ew, but it's a really quick clean. Just do this for all of them. Some of them are still wet, so I have to kind of wait. You see that blue one? But all we're gonna do is just put them in our layers and then we start at the back. Some people start at the front. I think I always mess it up. So I've started at the back now for all of my layered items and I don't mess it up. Okay, so you can use this Gorilla Glue, but for me, it expands too much when I'm working with things like this where there's holes. Man, I'm not cutting that stuff out. So I'm just gonna use a wood glue in a combination with a super glue. This is a super glue pen from Gorilla. I love it. I use it for everything. I am going to use a paintbrush to brush on my wood glue. I'm not gonna make you watch all of this, so don't worry. Just be sure to get it all in the corners. We're going to also um, produce a bigger or faster, stronger hold. I mean, by using the super glue as well. So any place I don't have wood glue, I'm going to go ahead and just put in super glue. 
And then here's the hardest part of this whole thing. I like to hover, I mean, to the point where you think it's attached. It's not even attached yet, not even attached yet. Now I'm going to press it down. So I like to hover really, really long, I guess, over just to make sure I'm getting it in the right place. And you can see there's a little glue seepage on that left top corner, but I'm going to go ahead and clamp it before I wipe that down. I'm going to clamp it in at least two places so I can avoid any shifting. So there's another piece where the glue came out. And I just put four around on these middle layers. I don't have to worry about the um, scratching of the layers because it's all going to be covered. So while that's clamped, I'm just going to go ahead and prep the next one. Remember, you don't have to do anything that's hovering like the waves or the word summer. You don't have to glue any of that. So now we're going to add on all of the other layers. And I also want to tell you, if you have any glue or anything seeping in the inside, go ahead and get that, especially if you're selling. I use a pick tool or a little bit of um, cloth on the end of that pick tool. So after this, I just clamped it with the protective pieces in place. I use about six or eight clamps. Like I'm, I'm extensive. I added a rope hanger just to make this one a little bit more beachy. And that was it. As always, you can get this file down below. I appreciate you being here. Please let me know if you have any questions on this project or any others. Please like this video, share, and subscribe for more crafting fun.